So we had planned to spend a, a short week in the middle of the season, actually early, too early, and uh, wasn't a lot, a lot there. I think they were just heading to water and heading to feed and we weren't gonna stop them from doing that. Disappointing, really disappointing. We covered a lot of good ground. came back for a week and a half or so and then we spent the last week of the season and we went to a brand new area mm -hmm. we've never been there before we're good let's roll you ready let's do this let's go find some elk we have the quad this time and just checking out a new area I'm hoping to get into elk but alicia has spotted a herd over here that was like two miles away at the time and then I uh, spotted a couple elk another direction. So we've seen elk, which is awesome. Seems like an awesome area for them. You get it? Yeah! Oh, sweet! <laughs> Running right to camp. Oh, it is, yeah. All set? Mm-hmm. All right, our first full day, our first morning out here. We're gonna go after a couple elk Alicia spotted last night. There were three. We're gonna get cracking, get over there. fast but our wind was bad 
setup was decent, except for the wind, and we repositioned. We have a really good setup now, and he's been quiet ever since. I don't know. It's a beautiful area, an elky area. We're seeing plenty of sign. Uh, but the elk are just stone dead quiet after those three bugles this morning. So we're kind of working our way back along the ridge, calling, listening, glassing when we can, and hoping for the best. Good morning. It's morning of day two. We're going back in the same general area we were yesterday, just gonna hit a different set of ridges. And we wanted to get up there just a little earlier. And good Lord, we're due for a crazy bugle fest. shot a fucking bull. I've got to say, I'm not super stoked right now because I'm not sure how I hit him. I'm not really believing this right now. No. I am. I am far from excited right now because I'm not 100% confident in that shot. I felt good like I was like holding right there. It sounded Let's dive over. 
over here just in case the wind starts going down. It's not something that's going on. So there's the arrow. Mm -hmm. So fast. Yeah. He probably won't be able to pick this up on on the screen, but it looks like the arrow is either just in front of or just behind the last rib. And the bull had just started to turn and he was quartering away a little bit from where I was. So I'm hopeful that I caught the diaphragm for starters. And I'm ho obviously I'm hopeful I caught both lungs. Um, the height seems okay, but I just don't know from this angle. So I think we're gonna quiet, well, I don't know. But with this being a little, a little questionable, I think we'll wait a bit longer before looking for the arrow and then from there decide how long we're gonna give the bull. Um, not a great shot, not a terrible shot. So we'll figure it out. All right, so we're gonna quietly, it's been an hour and uh, we feel like they ran far enough. And I think we have good wind now. Yeah, and we're gonna quietly work down and try and find the arrow and learn a little more of the story. See, it's all like yeah. So that's good. Let's go check it out. Fuck. Those are bubbles, aren't they? I don't know. Can you twirl it? Yeah. It just smells like elk blood. Yeah. Yeah, it does. It doesn't look like awesome lung blood, but it does look like, like on the vein there, like those were bubbles. Right, that's what I was looking at. I'm cautiously optimistic. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. It's been an hour and a half since I shot the bull. So we're gonna give it a little more time, probably another 30 minutes, and uh, that'll be two hours total but we're gonna keep checking the blood, analyzing that, making sure that it still makes sense, but there's a lot of blood and there's a mixture of that light blood with um, some bubbles and the dark blood you would associate with a liver. So, cautiously and hopefully optimistic
damn it, guys, we should have given you an update, but I don't know, it's been like 30 minutes. We lost blood. We did the thing, like, go around in a circle around the last blood, couldn't find anything. So we started circling some more, found where it looked like there were some bull tracks, but where the herd had come through. And then we found some definitive bull tracks, and we've been following those through this opening. Kind of got to a spot where we thought we might be losing them again. Stop, and there's we're standing right over a fresh drop of blood. And we're probably 60 yards from the last blood, so mm, that feels good. think is his track kind of like going where you'd think like into the trees and then took a sharp turn downhill i just hope it's him we're not 100 percent sure it's him because we haven't seen blood in a long time but we think it is so we're tracking it out good lord this is a roller coaster there's no way a video can do it justice. We picked up the track, the bull track, and followed that all the way down to this wallow. I joined up with the herd about halfway down there. We're certain it's the bull I shot. Um, there's no blood, but you can rationalize that because I shot him back and he's going downhill most of the way, so you can imagine the chest cavities taking all that blood. We get down there, kind of pretty much lose the trail, and uh, just don't feel like we totally exhausted the area around Last Blood, so Alicia suggested coming back up here. So we did. Looked around for another and this is probably, this was four hours in. We looked around for 30 minutes to an hour, probably really closely around here and couldn't find any new blood. And so I went back to follow the, the tracks that we followed earlier and look more intently for blood. And I figured I'd do a better job of that without my pack. So I took my pack off, set it down. I thought I'm gonna be on my hands and knees looking for blood, so I'm just gonna set my bow on my pack and you know I'm gonna go cover some ground that I've already covered. So I left my bow here. Alicia and I split up, going opposite directions pretty much for 45 minutes to an hour. And I'm coming back to sync with her to just try and figure out what's next. And I am a hundred yards away from where I dropped my pack. And I hear some strange noise off to my left, like, oh, oh. Just some very light moan, grunt type things look over and there's an elk a bull elk at 40 yards as soon as I saw that I think I made some noise and he looked in my direction I froze and then he just looked straight ahead kept walking walked right out in the middle of this little sage flat within 60 yards probably closer to 50, stops broadside, gives a glance my direction, and then continues walking and I don't have my bow. Turns out, it's the bull I shot.
when I first see the bull, I'm like, there's no way some random bull's walking through here. And then I thought, shit, this could be my bull. I look at his rack and yeah, that looks like my bull. Again, I don't have my bow. And I can see the blood on his side, exactly where I thought I hit him. I got to look at his rack more and that's my bull. So what happened is uh, Alicia hooked way up here and ended up bumping him. And he walks right through where we both had our packs set down. I can't believe I didn't have my bow. I take it everywhere. I take it to the bathroom. <laughs> but I didn't take it this time. I debated going after him because he's slow and doesn't seem to be very alert. But he, I don't want to bump him. I felt like I should wait and uh, just air things out with Alicia, have a, san a sounding board. Thankfully, she got back within like five minutes and told me she had seen the ball <laughs> as well. So it seems like he was bedded just like 180 yards up here uh, for the last six hours. It sucks that he is suffering. I fucking hate that. Um, but hopefully he's gonna bed down and have a peaceful ending. So we're gonna give him another four hours and we're gonna creep over there and go real slow. We're gonna glass and try and pick him up in case he's still alive. I'm gonna try and put another one in him. I don't wanna risk him dying in the next two or three hours and us leaving him overnight and that meat spoiling. And I feel like if he's gonna die from these injuries, it's gonna be in the next three or four hours, so. Hopefully we can bring this to a positive end. It's after five o'clock. It's been over nine hours since I shot the bull and three and a half since we bumped him. I'm nervous, <laughs> anxious, um, but it's time to go figure it out. There's a lot on my mind, a lot that could be said. I'm gonna try and keep it short. We didn't close out the night last night, not in the mood. We didn't find him. We didn't find any sign of him. Um, covered over six miles of ground just on the tracking. Uh, but we're not done. We're going back in there to look for him today. And uh, We'll see, we waited for it to get uh, fully light so we could maybe check for birds on the way in. Um, I hate the thought that he could be dead and the meat could be spoiling. Um, I hate all the thoughts, um, but to keep it brief, um, we're gonna go in and try and find him. Well, we started our track this morning at the basically the furthest spot we thought that bull would reasonably be on the general direction he was headed. And before we got to that timber, we bumped a bull at about 60 or 80 yards. We got down there, fresh bull tracks. So we tracked it out and after, I don't know, half a mile, Maybe 600 yards. Yeah. Alicia heard a stick break and we looked up and could see an elk moving through the timber at about 100 yards, but couldn't make out what it was. And we've been tracking it out. We're a mile deep now, but we haven't been able to catch up. And I think at this point, um, we're not going to, but, um, kind of lost the track anyways, so we're gonna go up 
the ridge a few hundred yards and then circle back through the top of the timber patch we just went through back towards where we bumped him from. We don't know if it's our bull. Um, could be another wild goose chase. So we're gonna work it out and figure it out. That's it. We didn't film a ton, um, but we worked hard. Yeah, we jumped that bull right out of the gate. Checked that out for a little bit until it didn't make sense and then went back to plan A and went through all of the areas. Went back through some areas, went through areas we couldn't get to last night. I don't know. Never found them. Um, I'd be inclined to think he's probably still alive and uh, there's a fair chance that what we were messing with today is him, but we just don't know. So there's a shit ton of unanswered questions and um, a lot of reflection to do. We just, we both feel uh, defeated, demoralized is, is a great word. We both feel demoralized, kicked in the guts, kicked in the teeth can't make any sense of it we put a lot into this that's it for now and you won't see this video anyways because it's fucking stupid but whatever we got to the point after the better part of two days searching for him mm -hmm. Alicia had a tag we decided to pull stakes break camp and go just get a change of scenery, change of mm -hmm. pace. And honestly, it's the first tag Alicia's chosen to have mm -hmm. in a couple of years. But after a day and a half, two days over there, it just felt like we needed to come back Absolutely. and look some more. It didn't for feel this right. And so again, broke camp, went back to the same spot. We came back to take another shot of finding my bull dead. And we came into the area we last saw him and started hearing bugles. It's been super windy, so we can't pinpoint where the bull is. So we're just hanging out in an area we've seen elk feeding before to see if maybe they'll filter through here.
あるの